can access the button. Oh, perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 12th of December. Reminder, last week was canceled due to uh, a lot of team members ill or not available at all. So we have two milestones to pack on one. Uh, today around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Varachten, Kevin Martin, and Hervé Lemeur. Mark Waite will most probably join a bit later. Let's get started with announcements. So weekly release 2.436 is out. So war. Package is on Docker image. Um, change log soon. I assume if it's not already done, uh, Kevin. It's already merged and uh, live. So that means Stefan ready to roll for Infra CI and Weekly CI. Is there any question? Uh, things specific things to underline on the change log of that weekly release. Nope, no one has anything. Perfect. Um, so a word on the billing status. I was able to report the cost from last week, uh, from last month, so November. So for the Azure account itself, uh, November was at seven point three k dollars which is clearly inside our goals for this year. So congratulations, everyone. Um, the goal for December uh, is to decrease below 7K. Ideally, 6.5 should be a, a nice goal. For that, that means we will have to continue our effort on op optimization of the IRM, Intel, and not pool and uh, migrating workload as much as possible to the sponsorship account. So we won't have to pay for these ephemeral workloads. December 6.5 to goal at, uh, is there any question on this topic? So as a reminder, we have opened an issue and we started to, the team just started to check the, uh, we have 1.5 to up to 2K per month on uh, the, um, forget the name, Azure storage account use for Get Jenkins IO. So there are improvements, but these improvements are, will be on the first quarter of 2024. So January, February, March. Uh, we might gain uh, quite some money here However, it won't be, we won't be able to make it for this month. So let's focus on the two open tasks. Okay, for you? Okay, uh, November. So the Azure sponsorship, we are now, we feel safe because in November we were able to consume the first dollar automatically on the credits. Um, we were able to consume from, from my memory from credits. Let's go for using it as much as possible. So if we are able to at least move 0, 0.5K from the other, that will be a really great goal for December. Any question on this one? AWS, we consume a bit less. We, we were uh, able uh, to, to have 9.8K uh, below the 10K goal, but far from the expected 5K. So the reason why we consume a bit less on AWS is because uh, as discussed during the governance meetings, uh, an additional effort has been done on the bomb builds, which are built uh, either on the, uh, less often and with less uh, test insights. A special care has been taken by Basil, uh, Alex, and Mark to decrease the cost of the infrastructure through the bomb build uh, compression. Uh, 
uh, more to in 2024. But, but thanks, thanks for that. That allow us to consume less credit on cloud based accounts. And there are discussions to see what will be the next step. As a reminder, our currently open action item for decreasing that credit is using the new update center. And we are relying on the security team uh, analysis for this one. So no change expected. We should try to stay uh, around 10K for December. So no specific goal here. Digital Ocean. Uh, Ray, is that okay for you to to update us on that topic, even if we have an action item later? Yeah. Um, so uh, I've asked for uh, renewal of the sponsorship. They are they agree? They are happy to renew it. Uh, they just ask us to wait until second one is finished and to mm -hmm. ask for renewal uh, in January. But it should be okay. Cool. I'm currently checking. We have nine six zero left for December two thousand twenty four. Uh, last week we consume. We consume. I don't. Uh, uh, next. Pro I promise. Next week I will check the this billing status. We consumed seven six six in November. Renewal for January. So that should be okay. If we see that the renewal takes some time, uh, the immediate action item for us will be to disable Digital Ocean uh, cluster from CIG and Kinsayu, which will immediately decrease uh, the credit consumption. Um, if we do that, Archive Jenkins Sayu and the ACP cluster will consume around 80 bucks for the month of January. We should have eventually 100, but yeah, we should we are okay for our digital ocean. Um, I haven't reported in detail for the other billing statues, but yeah, it's main, mainly fastly uh, and nothing to say here. Uh, we have an almost constant consumption uh, on fastly, which is 100% sponsored. So no need to spend more time on this one. Do you have any question on the billing status? Okay, I'm gonna try to check this on this format weekly now, so we will follow weekly. If it's too much, we can always change, don't hesitate. That's us, me trying something. Um, important announcement, repo jenkinsci.org, uh, which is a service, which is an artifactory SaaS instance hosted by Gfrog for us. We'll have its certificate expiring 20 December. We are late here. Um, I most probably forgot to add a calendar event and usually their support contact us. Um, I'm currently trying, we are cu currently trying to find a solution uh, because having a one year valid certificate need to be paid. It, uh, I, have, I wasn't able to find a serious CA provider that provide for free a one year certificate. If you know one which is not suspicious, because there are some, but with, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing if this, their CA is excluded from web browser during the year. So it's free, but yeah, there is a cost. So right, such... yes, sorry? Is it such an issue to renew it every three months? Uh, depends on what GFROG said. I don't think so. It's just that we have to be careful on not forgetting it. The problem is, uh, that means they had to restart the instance every uh, each time. Uh, we will know if it. I pro my proposal is that we use a Let's Encrypt certificate. We send them right now because we are really short in time, and we see if we're able to renew it every three months. So that will give an answer to your question. If it's not a problem, let's use something that we can master and which is free. Does it make sense uh, to the other? Because I agree with Hervé absolutely on... And maybe maybe they can uh, um, have to provide something and send us the certificate. 
So if they can renew the certificate using a Let's, Let's Encrypt challenge on, with HTTP challenge, they have the web server, theoretically they could. Six months ago, they weren't able to have this. It was on their roadmap, but yeah. As you know, uh, most of the GFROG uh, engineering team for the SAS is working from Tel Aviv. So yeah, they might not have all the time they want right now, given the context. Uh, that's a thing to ask them again. Uh, yes, but that's all. Uh, I agree with Hervé, we should try uh, renewing every three months. It's not that complicated. Any objection? Okay, upcoming calendar. Next week, we'll have another release. Uh, we will be the 12th uh, 19. Is that correct? I think so. I forgot when is the next LTS. Let me copy it past from last week. January 24th. Oh, you're right, thanks. January 24. Do you know do you know the version number? Uh it'll be 2.426.3, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Damon. So, so sorry, can you repeat uh I'm sorry. Uh for uh two point four two six dot three. Cool. So nothing for us to to comply with today. Uh, let's see if there is a security advisory announced. Uh, when was it? Nah, so no security advisory. And next major events, uh, first them. At Brussels. Isn't that three, uh, four? Oh, free for yeah, you're correct. Free for February with a Jenkins contributor summit on the second of February. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, folks. Do you have other major events? Okay. So let's roll. Um. What were we able to finish during the past milestone? Not the one we just finished, but the one before, because we canceled the meeting last time. So there were a plugin repository archived, including uh, their uh, their Jira, Jira part. So thanks everyone involved in that change. Uh, a, pl a new plugin named Pipeline Agent Build History, which allows to see in detail for a given agent all the build, the pipeline build history, uh, because that information was not really easily ac available uh, before that plugin. That plugin is brand new, and it has been installed on both Infra CI and Weekly CI for now. It requires a new baseline, so we can't install it on the other controller. The current LTS won't support it. We need a, a LTS bump. Uh, so let's see the result of this one. Uh, visually, it's really really nice, you can go on uh, any agent and see which build we're running. Not really useful for us on Infra CI though, because we don't have permanent agents and all of our ephemeral agents are running one build and then are kicked, but at least it works. So yeah, thanks. It, yes? It has flows. Uh, it won't work with any instance with lots of jobs. It's a for loop and it will flow. Uh, it's yeah. I'm not sure I understood what you said. Can you? Uh, th th there is an open it's a issue. Plugin which, which can be used on uh, the build uh, history plugin can be used on instance with not a lot of jobs. If there are a lot of jobs, it won't. It will crash the controller. Oh. Yeah. Uh, That's an open issue on some, the plugin. Mm, an advice given by. I see somewhere I don't remember where, but he he, he warned us about it. So uh, yeah, it's, okay. Uh, without nice any, yeah. okay, with 
Äh, äh, okay. Ja. Yeah. Okay. Nice uh, beginning, but not for us. Absolutely not. Which means we will have to uninstall it from Infra CI. It's because we have a lot of. It's on Wiki. Yeah, it's a demo instance, so it's not a problem there. But no, it's on. It's, it's installed on, on Infra CI, and we have okay. to remove it, which will yeah. uh, mean a bit more work because we will have to split the images used for Infra CI and Wiki CI. We have the capability with build buildix, uh, but that means additional work then. May I ask you, Hervé, to open an issue explaining that, uh, that and mentioning Jesse so we can confirm on the Eldesk issue. That will be an action item for us to work on splitting both images. Because the risk here that you are underlying, and that's a good thing, that means Infra CI might be blocked by this. And, might, and some of the issue we saw during the past week might be related. Uh, good, good catch, Avi. Good catch, absolutely. That 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 explains some weird thing we saw uh, with Stefan last week with Infra CI. Mentioning performance problem, as we will need to remove it from. And by the way, I'm not sure what is the interest of you, uh, installing it on weekly.ci because there is no agent on that instance. <laughs> I just realized this now. Yeah, I think it was for exposure, but yeah. It's been nice for with Marcus, I think. My proposal is that uh, short term we will remove the plugin from both instances, and then we can have the discussion about how do you plan to show it on weekly.ci? Because I believe that will require way more work than expected, including eventually starting an agent. Good point, Hervé, that will help. But I will be interested on in having Jesse feedbacks because that will point to the plugin internals to the developer of that plugin. If it's only yeah, an advice on a private yeah. channel, it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, it if it's okay for you, we'll opening an issue and pinging him, so he will be able to take the required time to explain and point to elements. Is that okay for you? It, it, it was so, a, a pointer in the code of the plugin with the for loop, uh, which is quite explanatory by itself. Okay. I'm searching the switch. And yeah, if you can open an issue uh, for us as an action item. Uh, the, so Basil is added to the board team because Basil is, has been elected as board member. Congrats. And uh, been elected as Infra officer and Kevin as document officer too. Yes. So congrats to both of you too. Thanks. Thanks, Eve. Um, FTP Belnet is back uh, in service because the the user disappeared after they were able to fix their problem, and they were they didn't send any trace route or proof that the problems was not on their own, while the Belnet administrator didn't add any firewall blocking them. So I've re-enabled the Belnet mirror. And if the end users still have issues, then they can still provide network proofs. Uh, but until then, for one user having one issue, never answering once their issue has been solved initially, yeah. Uh, unless someone object, uh, I've I've added the Belnet mirror again inside the list of available mirror. Uh, we had a request from Oleg to be removed from everything on Jenkins and Fra and added to the alumni special group. So that has been done and he confirmed it. Uh, Mark White was able to set up his VPN access. So the problem was uh, between chair and keyboard. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, you're not there. So that's the right moment to say it. <laughs> no, it was uh, mostly missing time to configure everything properly on Windows, but it worked. Uh, on his Debian machine. And uh, Hervé, can you just give us a quick summary of the sp the Contributor Spotlight website? Uh, yeah, it's working and it's integrating new change uh, 
Ich äh, äh, bei Plan äh, ich äh, preview Websites like äh, the other websites. So nothing particular to say. Äh, Just a summary. It's working. Cool. Is running in production. Cool. I mean, uh, you did great work, so that's important to to underline the things we were able to achieve successfully. Uh, there has been an issue closed as not planned. I don't remember. Someone had issue with CD release of their plugin. I don't remember. Oh, and was it solved? Okay, there was an issue before the CD process was complete. Okay, but the release finally happened, so nothing to say here. Any question for two milestone ago? Nope. So what were we able to finish for that milestone? Uh, there has been a Jenkins IO account to be deleted. Uh, so. Uh, just a quick recipe for everyone. When we have someone asking for Jenkins IO deletion, uh, I contacted them privately through the email inside account, not publicly explain on the issue by myself. If the user want to underline the email, that's their problem. The goal is to send them and tell them privately uh, to challenge them to change the email on account Jenkins IO. So they can, they can prove, they can authenticate change the, e the email to something not working, which by default disabled their account. Then as an admin, you check the, that they did what you asked them to do. And then you can delete safely because I mean, they have access to the account. So whether they are the rightful owner, they demonstrated they can use the password and receive email on the associated email, meaning they have take full takeover account. Uh, there were issue on CI Jenkins IO job for building Docker image of Jenkins. Thanks, survey. Can you just give us a summary on what you what you fixed or changed in order to solve that problem? Um, the the curl that was used in the Docker file to download the plugin manager on the WAR, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a TLS error. I didn't dig why there was an error. I replaced the curl by the uh, version not the uh, uh, version yeah, with uh, invoke uh, web requests uh, PowerShell uh, function. And there are no error anymore. So. Good. I haven't dig. Uh, I haven't searched why the curl.txt failed. Uh... Most probably the TL the CS certificate package or equivalent was either removed, changed, outdated, or misconfigured suddenly on one of the base image updates. So that I don't think it's a problem with us. And using the native uh, PowerShell client is really good and good enough. That I wrote since the weekly Docker image was released. That means your fix is uh, is in production now. Thanks. Um, we had DigitalOcean P80 rotation because they were going to expire uh, in a few days, middle of December. So there has been changed. Nothing to say about this. The calendar event has been updated for in free in 19 days. So every 19 days, we will send a new certificate for a repo in CI, and we will renew digital SMP80. There was an issue with Jenkins IO not updated. Uh, same, I believe, Hervé, you work on that problem along with Kevin. Can you give us a summary? I don't remember uh, what happened and what was the fix, but I saw that you fixed it, so. Uh, there was so there was a, the Jenkins.io wasn't loading up new content that had been merged. So like the two point four three five change log, uh, uh, blog posts that were merged, stuff like that. Uh, so I raised a help desk issue. Yeah. Ray figured out that it was a uh, stuck build and got to push through. Everything was loaded up and fine after about a half hour. Or so real quick, nice and easy. 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, same. I haven't understood why the build was stuck for five days. I'm still running, but yeah. Uh, I've killed it and the next one passed. Okay. Most probably controller restart that went bad. Okay, cool. Thanks, folks. Now for the work in progress. Um, first, uh, we have the SSL certificate for Repo Jenkins CI. I'm not able to catch it at first sight. Five line, fifth. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Uh, so we already discussed about this one earlier. So my proposal is that I'm going to send uh, proceed with the Let's Encrypt certificate, send it. So we won't be cooked just before Christmas by the problem. That will let us the whole January month. Um, uh, is that okay for you? No objection? Let's encrypt 19 days for now to avoid breakage right before Christmas. We'll check for one year or keep using LR. in January 2024. Uh, is there any question? No? OK. Uh, next topic by priority, migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. Harvey, can you just give us a summary on that topic? Because I believe it's blocked. Um, the pull request containing no change to upload the content on uh, or um, in orbit or uh, on R2 duplicates is uh, up for is uh, ready for review. We are waiting for some uh, availability of Jenkins security team so they can get some time to review it. And meanwhile, I've started writing a uh, Jenkins on Enhancement. Just a minute, I'm sorry. Uh, continue, continue. Uh, Jenkins on Enhancement Proposal Project. I don't remember the correct term. Jenkins on one Proposal. Who explain and uh, describe this new, this change. Uh, I'm putting it here because we want to to uh, ensure the Jenkins core will follow redirects from this mirror, which is the case now, but nothing is on forcing it, so writing a JEP will ensure that it's a contract between infrastructure and, and core. Um, Hervé, I think you should go ahead with all the, the topics because it's done now. Yeah, sure. Uh, you want me to go over? Oh. Um, the next one, uh, symbolic links for latest for Windows table and get Jenkins IO point to all the release. It was uh, an issue opened on Jenkins IO uh, this week, I think. Uh, I started looking at it and I don't know where this person found the latest link, so I ask at them where they find it. They say find it, so I can um, figure it out. So, so I can uh, uh, dig more in this issue. It's in progress. So, so this is a long-standing. It's a long-standing known behavior. I wouldn't worry about it. I think. It's it's behaved this way since we did the packaging updates two or three years ago. And yes, I agree, it's odd, it's unexpected, but it's a lot of work to resolve okay. this because when Olivier Vernon and I did this initially, we intentionally left this one alone. <laughs> and, and so okay. I would say we, for now, just accept that, yes, they have recorded a valid issue and the valid issue should not be in our plans to work on it for at least months 
because because it's just not important enough for to justify our our effort the the web pages do not have that problem right jenkins.io www.jenkins.io never goes through that symbolic link and therefore okay. let's not i i would propose any anyway, let's not spend our effort on it let's move it out of this this uh iteration and or this this set of this milestone and let it wait for months okay I've, um uh... yeah Yep, go ahead, uh, Harvey. Well, while looking uh, in it, I've also noticed that get, uh, the Jenkins.io is also serving the updates center content. Yeah, that's please, that's another topic. I just yeah, okay. read your last message. Uh, that's expected. Okay. That has always been, and it has been documented in, I don't remember which script. However, I will disagree with Mark in the sense that the proposal from Hervé is almost one year ago uh, about switching from Blob, BlobXfer to AZ copy, which is the official and supported way to copy data to any kind of storage account. I'm not sure if AZ copy supports Blob copy. That has to be checked, but that command line supports properly uh, simling the references as Hervé demonstrated on the update center topic, which is the tool we use. So Damien, are you saying that it might be fixed as a happy side effect of other work we're doing? Exactly. The, the only side effect I see here is storing a bit more data because it will duplicate the latest content. However, that's just a few hundred megabytes and paying for storage is close to nothing, especially with blob storage. Uh, Hervé, did I miss something on that part? But I remember you commented it out, and since you tried easy copy, that should be a, a solution. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't have make the link, but if you said so, yes. The, the problem is the link exists for some and not for the others. So we can decide to remove the latest, but that's uh, that's way more complicated to remove it once copied, unless we find a way to exclude it properly from all scripts running regularly on update Jenkins IO. Anyway, that's more a matter of should we spend time on this now, later. I believe the good side effect secondary for that will be getting away from Blob XFER, which has been deprecated since at least 2021, if not earlier. So that's a critical piece of the infrastructure, these scripts, and relying on command line that has been deprecated and not maintained is not a good thing. And I believe that Hervé's proposal, since it's already one year, should be considered. So put the help desk uh, 3414 next milestone, for example? Yes. That means we might close this one uh, as a duplicate of the old one and add a comment on the old one and put it on new milestone. Is my understanding correct? And do you agree? Yes, if it resolves the current issue, yeah, sure. And okay, if it so, doesn't, then we reopen this one. So my interpretation of that is AZ copy would be the thing not resolving this symbolic link issue. If we got AZ copy and did not resolve this, that would still be a positive outcome. The, exactly. the, 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 benefit is, the benefit we're seeking is not fix this specific issue. It's get off of blob transfer and get on to AZ copy. Absolutely. Got it. OK. Thanks, Hervé, for asking the right question on the issue, though. I, I don't know where their link comes from. And that would be interesting for us to at least cut from the source, even if we update the links. Is there any additional concern, question, or pointer here? No, I couldn't. I'm adding a point on the update center note survey about what you mentioned. Jenkins.io slash updates seems to have you say content just we have not here 
because some might be ex expected or some used to be expected and aren't anymore, which could explain the discrepancy in the last updates timestamp you saw. Is that okay for you to report uh, comments with the links and the explanation on the issue, please? And then we can search because that's that's a way to not forget uh, Hervé. Uh, because if I can find or if I can ask Olivier for help for memory, we could point the reason why it was copied and why it could be cleaned or kept or update updated. Any question? Okay, Mark, just I want one last validation. Is the scenario for repo Jenkins CI with Let's Encrypt certificates valid 19 days at least for now is okay for you given the close deadline? Yes, so that, 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 that idea will give us a valid certificate that lasts beyond the current expiration date, right? And yep. therefore, yes, absolutely. That is very much acceptable. And Hervé asked the right question. Um, is it a problem to renew the certificate every 19 days? And, and I think the, the answer is for right now, it's, it's the choice we have to make. We have to coordinate with JFrog. I assume they're the ones who ultimately apply the certificate onto the site somehow? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I remember six months ago we asked them and they said it was on their roadmap, but they didn't they weren't able to tell tell us because they could have a let's encrypt feature on their system on the platform on their own with the HTTP uh, validation. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, they should be able to provide that feature. Great. And that could be a good way to to give them an incentive. Because if every 19 days we upload a new certificate at a given moment on time, their support will be annoyed by the frequency and that might help them to, to fix the issue uh, at the future level. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, we have folk that try to create an issue, uh, the, uh, an account. The email was gray listed from their email provider as I could find. So now they have to contact their administrator or change their email. Uh, gray listed, they need to contact their email provider. And what help me with the definition. What does it mean to be gray listed? Does that mean they reject our email sometimes? Does that mean they reject our email list, our email all the times, but they use a different color than than the usual? I never understood the concept of gray list, and it looks like it's changing okay. depending on the email provider or SMTP server. Exactly, that's the choice of the provider, and they consider that gray mail is neither spam, specific spam, was trying to 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 send any uh, any bad uh, advertising or or any hooker. And um, the the real good email coming for work or from yeah. your friends, and and the advertising one is is in the gray area. So dealing with the the gray uh, specific filtering is uh, a wall a wall work by himself, and no, they no. they do that like they want most Thanks. of the time. That's a nightmare. I, I still don't understand the reason of the gray listing. That makes no sense for me. And there's no sense. Every Every time the condition triggering gray listing are never clear, except no. they don't want something. to. They don't want to give you the rules. Yeah. They want to keep them. It's to see if you behave correctly. So they won't give you the rules to be. But what what does that mean? It depends on who. who, who. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It depends on you. Issue on their side or they can change their email and as usual without any answer from this user i will close the issue as not planned uh, next week uh more okay so you started updating the status of uh, confluence publisher plugin can you give us a summary yes so the suspension is is merged merged five hours ago. The plugin site doesn't yet show that it's suspended, but updates.jenkins.io should. 
So okay. in fact, I'll check updates.jenkins.io just to be sure you can go on. This is under control and behaving the way the project says it should behave. Yes, it's already been removed from the updates.jenkins.io delivery package okay. because it's not visible on, on the HTTP site updates.jenkins.io at all. So, yep, it's successful. Cool. Thanks. Um, issues modified by a spammer. So uh, the bulk update feature was available for a lot of people. And someone who thought they were smart decided to bulk update a bunch of issues, existing issues, uh, inside the issues Jenkins.io. So we were able to lock out the account of that person and Daniel helped us on disabling the bulk update feature on Jira. So unless we need it specifically, that will be disabled to avoid such a mess. Now the problem is how do we roll back? The change is done by that user because the bulk update feature does not have a rollback methodology. And I personally don't want to try to tamper or play with Jira because I don't know how Jira work at all, even if I have administrator. And that one is uh, is really complicated. So Mark, we need help from people who know, right. know their so way with Jira. Let, let me give you my latest status and, and I've got the action item. So, so in the governance board meeting on Monday, it was discussed in depth and right now, the recommended path forward from Basel Crow is that we accept that we are going to lose all data added to JIRA after 6 December 2023 and restore from backup before the spammer. And the reason he recommended it is because one of the damaging changes was some bug types change or some issue types changed from epic to non-epic and by doing that all the links were severed right oh, and all of a sudden all it's it's and there is no way to recreate all those links that were severed now i've got to check with with all the other officers i've got to check with vadek folonier and with the security team to see if that's acceptable i've also got an open ticket with the linux foundation asking them what what is the backup that they have that precedes December 6, 2023 at 2300 hours UTC, at 23, UT, 23 hours UTC, uh, because I don't know what backup they have and that will be part of this question. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to have further discussions. Uh, the, board meeting dis is, the more board meeting discussion is not a decision. It is merely guidance that we need to come to a point where we say, all right, we are accepting either the loss of those epic links and retain the data we've received since then, or we're accepting we have lose the data we, we've received since then and retain the epic links. That's the kind of decision, decision point we're at right now. So it needs a bigger discussion. That discussion will likely happen in private email discussions, at least initially between the board and officers. And I will, will start that discussion uh, because we've got, to, we've got to decide on a path. And part of the decision on the path needs, needs assessment of which epics were damaged. And that requires that I dig into things in, in much more detail. So, okay. so this I, one if is- If I may, there is an emergency request here. That's oh, contacting ahead. the Linux Foundation as soon as possible for them to send us the backups before the backup rotation goes far and, if they have retention. Right, and I and I, I contacted them on Sunday uh, to ask ask that, and I con I continued that LF Foundation interaction yesterday, and will continue it today as well. Uh, part okay. of my worry is that that they may say sorry. Our rotation has already rotated it off, and and you're out of luck. That, okay. That's if so. That's the reality. Then. Be, be, because the, the problem here is is not uh, restoring immediately. Is us sending uh, sending uh, them sending to us 
the backup, the, the last backup they have encrypted because we have sensitive data, but we need a way to get the data before yeah, their, their rotation. Well, but, but, and so that's where I'm not sure what we would do with it because we have no Jira instance that we can use to restore it. Uh, yes, but at least that's an SQ, uh, SQL uh, dump. So we should be able, at least with the Jenkins security team, between person who have access to the SEC, uh, because we need we need this to be, it's a sensitive data, but it's an SQL dump. So we can extract data or analyze it. And we, we should ask this as soon as possible and then decide on the restoring or not. Because we need the data to be copied somewhere out of their system first. Okay, so let me. That's that's a, a subtlety I had not considered. Let me. I will certainly include that in my request. Great, thank you. Ask be care, for. Be careful that the data must be sent to as few person as possible. So only you or Daniel Beck or Vadek Folonier or eventually right. me. Right. Right. It must be a secure destination. And and limited, highly limited access. Great. All right. Thank you. I'll continue that. I'll start that discussion with that topic. Thanks. The all the dump to a secure location or people. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. Ah. I have the, the car repair uh, that is just landing. Just let me a minute to see what I can do. Can I well, let you drive Demi, the next If step? it's okay, I'll drive the next one because the next one is again in my voice, if that's okay. Okay, cool. And uh, Stefan Hervé, I continue to take notes, please. Actually, and I'm even happy to do the note taking. So, so that's... Cool. See you in a minute. All right. Thanks, Damien. Now, where is my note taking page? Ah, here we go. All right, so so the next topic is the J or the Artifactory Re Bandwidth Reduction Project. We thought we had completed it, and JFrog came back and said, "Hey, you used twenty terabytes in in November, and we see that we think that the data is coming from cached copies of Maven Central that you are unnecessarily delivering to others." Uh, because they should use Maven Central to get Maven Central resources. Uh, we analyzed the log file and saw that the log file, in fact, exactly matches what they said, that log files show that Maven Central is still cached. And it's cached through a repository named JCenter and another one named this OSS Sonotype thing. So when we remove those caches in a brownout, caches in a brownout, when we remove them in the brownout, uh, we found some relatively minor issues that we need to add one or two additional cached repositories for a very narrow set of, of jars to our definition, and then we can remove them. And my proposal was that beginning this Friday, we would go to production with that change. The idea being, let's make the change. Now, the question to the infra team is, are you available on Friday? We need Damien because he is an art of, a repository administrator, or we need Daniel Beck, a repository administrator. Uh, others of us can't administer the art the J the artifactory repository. So I think the question there is to Damien, can he can he be available on Friday? And if not, uh, on Friday, if not, is Daniel Beck available on Friday? Any questions from others? Okay, hey, so then I think we go on to the next next topics. Next topic was diagnose slowness when greater than two hundred parallel tasks are parallel pipe. Let's see, let's use we're using line breaks to tell where we're at there. 
So this one, um, I'd propose, so I'm not sure that we need to do any further work on it for now, it will wait. Any, any objections from others? In fact, Damien used um, the quota expansion on the new subscription for this one. So that should be uh, good enough, I think. Okay, good. All right. So then next topic was migrations left over from public Kubernetes to ARM64. Yeah, this yeah. one is on me. I forgot oh. uh, um, a few um, services that uh, that were left on, on public K8S when we migrated. But we we looked around with Damien. All those ones are really not as easy as we thought. Um, maybe the artifact caching proxy would be one of the easiest one because it's it's uh, um, uh, Nginx, but um, with a, a, a really high level of fine tuning by Damien. So we need to make sure that the ARM part um, platform will still um, be able to uh, comply with those fine tuning. Um, we may have to do some testing. It's not straightforward. And as for key clock and LDAP, we need to make sure that the volume uh, will be great because we are in, we're not in the same zone. For IRM, we have to be in um, uh, zone three in the East US two, but zone three, uh, no, zone one, one sorry, zone one. And uh, and uh, all the, the nodes that we have from now and the volume mounted on them are zone one. So to migrate those, we will need to first migrate the volume to a, a non-specific zone area. And, and that migration uh, need um, a stop. So we did that once for uh, weekly, I think. So we know, we know the process, but still we have to, to plan it and to deal with it. So we choose for now to, to postpone a little and to make sure that we, we can do that um, straightforward. And as for my, my rabbit, the IRM image is not yet provided, but we are expecting it with the new, uh, with the takeover, I think you said takeover on the project. I know that Hervé proposed something, a pull request or an issue, I forgot, to help them to um, to manage the IRM64. You you want yeah. to, to say more, mm. Hervé? I have to analyze uh, this with Damien. I forgot this too, but yeah. So yes, we got stuff, but uh, it's not easy and it's not as easy as it has been. So we, we really need to think that out. So it feels like this one is, is it's okay if we, if we pause it and come back to it later. I think so. Okay, good. Next one was export download mirrors list to a text representation. It's still me. <laughs> Go ahead, Stefan. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I said nothing from, from now, so now I have to speak. Um, I started that. The, the aim is to have a, um, a list of the mirrors that we're using for uh, Gage Jenkins IO. And um, I started that as a report from uh, infra and and in fact there is a sub issue for that just creating the the work area in infra ci for report and i started um, this issue with a pull request um, the, the the skeleton with a, um, a script a bash script that is able to parse the the page and to put that in the text file but it's it's not um, it's not good enough. We need to work on I need to work on that more to uh, probably provide a JSON instead and to provide all the IPs with with the, those URL. So it, it needs a little bit of work, but it's it's um, it's interesting. So. Okay. And what we did is we choose not to be specific to uh, those mirror bits, mirror lists and to uh, be more generic with uh, infra information. Um, like that, we will be able to add IPs or something else and, and use that JSON to uh, to show those information. So it's it's better for, for, for later to be to be growing. 
I'm not Thank sure you. my English is good enough, but that's the way. Thank you. Anything else on that topic? Shall we, given that we've hit time, shall we call ourselves an end or do you want me to continue us going through reporting on the other topics? Can, can we keep going? For we certainly can. Done. Let's yeah. do it. All right. So next, the get.jenkins.io migration from Mirabits to Mirabits parent. And now where, uh, let's see, I'm not sure where we are on the, oh, I can't, I can't scroll Damien's screen, but I could potentially oh. stop his sharing, but continue. Go ahead. So this one is migrating from Mirabits to Mirabits parent. I'm not sure we started that, but the aim is to use the new charts that uh, Damien and uh, Hervé did, which is an umbrella with a sub no. Uh, uh, child. No work has been done on it yet. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. Good. Because this would allow us to use the little part of it as IRM to ARM, because the only one not able to, to move to ARM is my orbit. But the HTTPD and the um, files are able to. So, great. All right. Next, tune the node pool size. Tell me. Uh, we did work on that. We created a new node pool, Intel node pool, not pool, sorry, a smaller one, cheaper one. Um, and we migrated um, those um, all the, the services by tainting and, and using all those uh, Kubernetes stuff. And uh, our problem now is that it, it's using five nodes uh, and, and we were expecting only uh, three. Uh, and in fact, we, we, dig, we dig a little with uh, Damien on the, um, the consumption in CPU and RAM and we will be able to to lower uh, the expectation and and um, uh, how you call that the limits and requests in in Kubernetes to make sure that we pack a little more and we're using less um, nodes. So we we are making some some uh, uh, economy economy some saving on that. Good. Oh, next one is me too. Oh gosh. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I started to uh, provide some uh, agents in I ARM on Jenkins Infra this time. So for that, I had to create a node pool, ARM node pool within uh, Jenkins uh, Infra. So dot infra dot ci dot Jenkins dot io. Um, it's done. We got that node node pool. Um, same kind of, of machine than the one in CI, so small one and cheap. And um, I, I started an, an agent definition in Kubernetes to be able to use it. So for now, there's a specific label. Um, it was not working this morning, but it was last week. So I don't know, somebody touched something this weekend or, or the wind, I don't know. But uh, we need to, to go deeper in that. And and we plan a migration of infra .jenkins.io, um uh, in, in uh, ARM2. The problem will be the same than the one I spoke before with the migration of the volume. And that volume will need to be... Um, zone friendly with any kind of zone and that means that we need to prepare a stop of Jenkins for a while to uh, deal with that migration so we need to plan great next was the anything else on infra ci that's for me okay next then set up the secondary azure subscription so as far as i know it uh, we are are now consuming uh, from the secondary subscription. Yes, it did. It did everything in in Terraform, and it's awesome. It's working nice. Great. Okay. And we were under budget for November. the The under budget in this case means the the use of the secondary resources did not affect the budget. It was only a relatively small amount, but we stayed under budget for November of 2023 as well, even without the uh, even without the secondary subscription.
Next topic, sponsorships, DigitalOcean. Hervé, do you want to share with us what how the progress is there? Um, so we touched a bit about it uh, in the beginning of the meeting, but uh, yeah, DigitalOcean is happy to renew their sponsorship. So we are extremely happy about that. Um, they ask us to okay. wait until the end of the current sponsorship. Uh, so we'll, I filled their form, uh, but we will uh, uh, wait until January to, to ask them to push a button to give us more money. Excellent. Thank you. Special thanks to DigitalOcean for their ongoing sponsorship. That's wonderful. Yeah. They will probably contact us to to get uh, a piece of writing about how we are using and enjoying uh, DigitalOcean. Great. Thank you very much. Next topic then was Packer and GOS version tracking. Stefan, I think this may be you. Yes, that's my little nightmare, this one. Uh, I'm still on it. I'm working a lot. It's it's the Windows goes uh, goes port. Um, still not uh, up and running, but uh, almost there. Um, but each time I say that, I have a week more. So um, I did I did both uh, pull requests right now. The one with the Ghost version, Windows Ghost, and the one with the update CLI matching those Ghost version in Windows. Um, I did find out that we need to have a pause before launching the ghost without the pause. Uh, it's, it's, it's failing. And I had to had a retry too. So, so sometimes it's, it's going through at the second or third or third time, whatever the timing of the pause is. Um, not really, um, consistent, but at the end, we are sure that the image is good because all the tests are going through. So that's the way for us to make sure that what we provide is perfect. The problem is that while we were building that, it's taking a lot of time. I'm on it. I'm done Thank you. It. I'm not happy because I'm taking way too much time. Great, all Absolutely right. Absolutely not, I'm happy with the outcome. <laughs> so. Okay, next then is redirect the Chinese pages to English pages. Kevin Martins, I think this one's for you and for me. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm, I'm at the point where I've installed Kube, uh, Minikube and a couple other pieces to uh, like the Helm charts and uh, forked repos, but I got stuck with some of the operations. So um, I've been looking into the rewrite call and trying to determine what the options are and what works. Uh, and uh, I've got them, well, I've got the a list of resources and stuff that I found from like Stack Overflow and a couple other places for my own research and uh, information. Um, but yeah, that uh, I, I've got to that point. And then, um, yeah, we're just looking to sync up at this point between myself and Mark. Uh, and once we're able to take a look at it together and kind of walk through it, then we'll have uh, an idea and plans for next steps where we need to go. Yeah, so the bad news is Mark has not done his part and probably won't do it for quite a while. Damien, the, since you, go ahead. Yep, the good news is that now I hope I won't have any more disturbance on my personal uh, schedule, so I should be able to take some time on the upcoming days to help uh, Kevin. So Damien, there's a, I need to go back a little bit since you've, you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to the remove jcenter and oss.sonotype.org release repositories. Mm -hmm. The proposal right now is that we go, go into production with that on Friday because the changes we need to do are relatively relatively small and the, the, the brownout was quite successful. Uh, are you okay with, are you available Friday or do I need to go ask, da go ask Daniel Beck for his help on Friday? I am available Friday. Uh, okay. So that's okay. We can proceed. Great. All right. So let's plan for it Friday at, I believe it's 1 p.m. UTC, and I will get the announcements out. So let me make myself a note there, Mark. Prepare announcements for the 1 p.m. And we can actually make the 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 additional cache 
even today. So we add it, correcting the cache so that it is publicly readable is a safe thing to do immediately. Okay, I uh, just need to double check with uh, Daniel later Great. today or worst case tomorrow, just in case. Perfect, thank you. All right, then we can go back to the to the end of the list. Okay, so the last item is Scaleway sponsorship, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, Stefan, I believe you didn't have time, neither feedback. I had from time, Scaleway. I, but I, I didn't hear any, any feedbacks. The link for, for the form is not available anymore. There is no way to uh, subscribe to any uh, open source area. Um, still waiting for for some some feedback from them. I know that they are going through a lot of changes inside in, in internally, so maybe that's one. Okay, I got a proposal. We keep that until next week, last chance. And if they don't answer, if if you have a negative answer, we close the issue, and we can change that issue to OVH sponsorship. Maybe appealing to one of their concurrents might help in the future, especially since OVH has a really strong platform as well. Is that okay for you? Yes. And switch to OVH sponsorship. If they still come back to us in one or two months, then no problem. If they want to give us credit, we won't say no. But I believe uh, no need to to spend too much time after what you tried. And yeah, let's try other sponsors. Great. OK, uh, just something quick to add about the sponsored uh, subscription on, uh, <clears throat> uh, on Azure. Uh, so I'm, go I'm working, and I we should soon see uh, Trusted CI, Search CI, and CI Jenkins IO having all their agent on that new subscription. I've prepared the work on my local machine and I'm gonna deploy this uh, today and tomorrow on the go if I don't see any other problem. Work in progress is uh, I'm switching a CI right now. Uh, that's, that's all. Just a tiny update, I'm adding the text here on the right update. Cool. Outside this, that's all for me. Do you have other topics, folks? No? Okay. If that's okay, five more minutes to check the last uh, issues because we didn't have time for that last week and we almost missed the repo Jenkins CI. Wow, a lot of triage. Um, so you say the bomb will be uh, postponed. G Center, we took SSL certificate. We have this DNS domain Jenkins IO expire. Um, I believe Tyler uh, is in charge of this one, Mark. Is that correct? He is, and I think that it will happen just fine because the last one that I raised for this happened within the time that needed. So you're welcome to assign this one to me, Damien, and I'll take mm -hmm. ownership of it to assure that it happens promptly. Uh, okay. when the time comes. There's no reason for it to be uh, in the team's backlog for any particular milestone. It will, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. And if we get less than 30 days, I'll talk to Tyler. Okay. Um, we had an issue open by uh, Cloud B's colleague uh, about IPv6 support for repo Jenkinsci.org. That's a good catch. Uh, right now, we don't have a DNS IPv6 uh, record for that. So we have to ask Gfrog uh, if they provide public IPv6. I believe they should, and it might already be the case. So if that's the case, they only have to give us the IP or the list of IP, and we can add the DNS record on our own, and, and voila. So um, since it's a quick one, since it's only one email to Gfrog, and since we are currently exchanging a lot of email with them, I propose to take it and ask them, is that okay for everyone? Yes. Okay, I'm removing try age. Um, 
What was the next triage? Suspend Confluence Publisher. I believe that's the one currently part of the milestone. So I just need to remove the label later. And CD release, we have a new issue about CD release failing. Uh, I propose to add it to the milestone and we'll see it's a day-to-day -day work. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Do you have another topic or thing you want to mention? No? no. Okay. So I propose that we stop sharing, stop recording and see each other next week. I'm available uh, after stopping recording if you have private questions. For everyone else, uh, goodbye and see you next week.